this is Jennifer here. Today I'm going to make a meatloaf. I call this a kid-friendly meatloaf because my husband won't eat meatloaf. A lot of people don't like meatloaf and what the secret is. People, little kids don't want to see all that stuff in the meat. So my rationale is if you come up with a really good meat, put a tangy, sweet barbecue or tomato sauce, whatever your family likes on top. And then I like to have brown gravy with mine. So I'm gonna make, not homemade, if you're a chef, a cook, go right ahead, you know Jen's the cheater here. So let me tell you what I got. I've got half of the meat left, a uh, ground beef 80-20 when I made my uh, four meat spaghetti. You can go back and check that video. And then I've got some more 80-20. This is a pound and this is a half. Got black pepper. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna go Cezanne, which I really love, or Lori's. My normal seasoning base for almost any meat is Lori's black pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. Um, I've got a meatloaf packet that I'm gonna use. You know, I'm big on cheating. I'm gonna use some Lipton's onion soup mix, but I'm gonna put it through a sieve. I'm gonna sieve that. I don't want the freeze-dried onions in there. Like I said, I'm trying to make this kid friendly. I'm gonna use an onion, but you see I have a grater here. I'm gonna grate it. I've got some Ritz crackers, uh, two pieces of white bread, some celery. I'm gonna grate that too. Got my meatloaf pan. I've got it lined in foil so I can pull it out. A little Worcestershire sauce. Got my cups I can measure. Got my brown sugar out of the freezer. If you've seen it in other videos, you know that's how I keep it. My onion. And I bought this here. Um, this is the better than gravy. This is what I'm gonna use to soften my bread mixture. I don't know why people use milk. That has always amazed me. I don't know how milk would enhance the flavor other than fat um, to make it moist. And the eggs is the binder. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything grated up and set up for you guys. And then um, we'll form this meatloaf and get it in the oven. And for me, meatloaf is personal. Like I said, season it for your family's taste. But I think the real deterrent for children is seeing those green peppers, those onions, those carrots, and all that stuff in there. That's why I'm gonna grate it. And if you wanna do carrots and all that, I say macerate it, put it in the food processor, and then mix it in. They'll never see it. That way you can sneak it in. Hang on, I'll be right back and get everything set up. Okay guys, I'm back. I've used my grater and I've grated the celery and the onions um, in here. And what you want to notice, when you use grated, you don't need near as much as chopped because you're getting the juice and it's really, really fine. And I'm going to cook it that way. Um, it won't be as accurate when you taste it. Like I said, I'm doing this as a seasoning like for little kids. Got my ground beef in here. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna wipe all this off when I'm finished with uh, this Worcestershire, just a couple squirts with Lysol when I'm done. Now, I like Lipton onion soup mix, but like I said, for children, I personally don't like the freeze-dried onions. I mean, I, they're okay, but um, I would prefer not um, for this recipe. So what I'm planning to do is see if I can sieve the seasonings through and not get the freeze-dried onions. Because I, yeah, it's working out perfectly. I don't want those or as many, as less as possible because I think that's what uh, turns kids off is that texture thing. And this is a really good uh, seasoning, I think. I just don't want the uh, freeze-dried onions. Oh, and I only used uh, half of that onion that I grated. And this is one stalk of celery. Like I said, it goes quite a, quite a long way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that all done. Okay, to this that. I'm gonna use one packet of meatloaf seasoning, just cause. A little cheater, you know, I love to cheat stuff. I'm not big on, you know, exactly how it's supposed to taste meatloaf. I just like it uh, really seasoned really good. So I'm gonna use some garlic powder, my basics. I always put garlic powder and onion powder and everything I cook. I don't use the onion salt or onion um, or garlic salt because it makes it more salty. And I think this time for this, I'm gonna go with Laurie's. I'm gonna stick with the other. I love Cezanne, Cezanne, but um, I think I'm gonna do my normal Laurie's just so this won't change up. I know exactly how it's gonna taste. A little bit of seasoning salt. Got a seasoning at every level. And um, I'm gonna go ahead here. Now I've got a cup of hot water. And I've got my two white pieces of bread. Yeah, I want old school. And I also have 12 Ritz crackers. Now to this, I bought this uh, better than gravy. And like I said, I don't know why people add milk. I'll never understand that in a million years. I'm gonna add quite a bit of this to soften my bread mixture. Cause this, and I'm gonna add some water to this. This is what um, keeps your meatloaf 
this is boiling hot water, from being dry is this mixture right here, the bread and the um, milk or however you want to do it. Because if not, the ground beef will just cook and the juices won't have anywhere to go but to leach out and then you end up with like dry meat. So that's why when the hamburger starts to cook and you've got this, I guess they call it a panache. I tried to look it up last night but I forgot to further my education. And uh, this gives it more flavor. Like I said, I want my meatloaf to taste like beef. You can add pork, chicken, however you want to do it. I really don't care as long as it's seasoned. But like I said, the purpose of this is like a kid meatloaf, friendly meatloaf. Because my husband still won't eat it, won't even consider it, never liked it. And I'm sure his mom made an excellent meatloaf. She's an excellent cook. She was an excellent cook, rest in peace. So I'm going to let this sit for a while because um, this really needs to get really, really soft. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up my meat. Um, I'm going to add in the uh, grated onions and celery. I'm going to put some gloves on and mix this up. And then I'll add the eggs. And I'll get right back with you guys. Stay tuned. Okay guys, I just put the last topping of uh, tomato paste, uh, was well ketchup, Worcestershire, and brown sugar on top. It's been cooking about 45 minutes, so I'm going, going to go another 15 to 20. And you can see a lot of the oil has accumulated, even though it's 80-20. But when I pull this out, uh, the grease, um, pull this out of the foil, the grease should separate, and then it should be a nice tight meatloaf. So stay with me. I'll get back with you guys in a little bit. And we'll make the gravy that goes with this. Stay tuned and I got my joke for you. Okay guys, I'm gonna get the gravy ready because I like mine served with brown gravy. I kind of got that from Boston Market. Like I said, since I never really cook meatloaf because my husband doesn't eat it, I would just go to Boston Market and grab some. So I got the less sodium uh, packets and this asks for each, a cup of water for each packet. And you know, I keep telling you guys, that I'm extra, so I like a lot of gravy. So I'm going to make two packets just to make sure I have plenty. All right, that's two cups of water. Got that on high, and I'm supposed to add this to cold cups of water. Oh shoot, I made a mess. You guys know I hate that. So I'm going to add this um, packet of gravy, and um, cause I like the sweet tangy sauce. Like I, said, I don't care if it's barbecue sauce or whatever. Goodness. And um, then I do like the beef flavor of the meat. Um, I just never really cared for it if it was barbecue sauce because it's like, you know, that's not meatloaf, that's, that's barbecue meat. So, um, yeah, add two packets of that and then you just cook this. Now, if you like uh, homemade gravy, you know, I don't cook. I love to eat, but I don't cook. I'm one of those people. I want you to ring that cow bell and I come around the corner. And I got my knife in one hand and fork in the other, other, and I'm ready to eat. My compliments to the chef, I'll do the dishes, I'll do it all. I just really don't care to cook. It's not that I'm a bad cook. Everybody says I'm an excellent cook. I just don't care to cook. And it's kind of funny, because right now I'm only weighing about 150, 160 pounds, which I'm a little light for my size, uh, my height. Because normally I average around from 160 to 180. When I was thicker than a snicker, I'm thin now. I'll go back and look at some of my nursing videos when I was um, filming, and you'll see me at 180, 190 pounds. Um, pretty big girl. So yeah, I'm gonna let this keep on cooking and whisking this, and this thickens over time. This is some really good gravy if you're um, like myself, not good at making gravy. Like I said, I don't cook, so gravy is something you have to get good at and you do over time, and since I don't do it much, 
that's why I don't mess around with uh, making homemade gravy with flour and oil and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get this thickened up for you guys and uh, get back with you. So stay with me. Okay guys, it's been about an hour. I'm gonna take the meatloaf out. As you see, the gravy is nice and thick and it's ready and it thickens upon sitting. And that's two packets, like I said, and this is just for me. So I'm gonna get the meatloaf out so you guys can see it. And if you saw my last video, you know I made the grave mistake of um, cutting into my pie too soon and I have learned that you gotta wait. So this meatloaf has to rest before I cut it. So I will come back, get it on display for you guys and show you how this looks once it's finished. Stay with me. Okay guys. So now I've got the meatloaf on broil. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. So I got it on broil for the last 15, five or so minutes so it can get uh, caramelized. Some bad camera shooting. Uh, hang on a second, let me flip this. There we go. Okay guys, there it is. I've got it on broil, just caramelized on the top. I'm ready to pop this out and we'll be ready to eat. Hold on. Okay guys, I'm back. Here's the meatloaf. It is completely cooked. As you see, it's absolutely delicious looking. It's moist. Um, all the juice, when you pull it out of the foil, all the grease and everything just comes out and I transferred it onto a plate. So, um, I got the gravy here. Let me show you the gravy. And it thickens. It's pretty hot here as it sits. And um, this is some really good uh, meatloaf. Hope you guys give it a try. And um, like I said, it's kid friendly. When I go ahead and cut this, you'll see that um, all the kids seem to love it. Um, Cause like I said, it just looks like meat. And when they taste the sweet barbecue sauce on top, they really, really love it. So anyway, here's my joke. This man owned a pet shop and he had a bird in the window, a cockatoo, who liked to talk to people as they walked by. And this woman had just started working in the area by downtown. So she went down the street to check out the scenes and see what kind of shops and stuff they had for lunch. And she walked past the pet shop and the bird was in the window. And the bird said, ooh, you sure are ugly. There's quite a few people on the street. The lady didn't pay too much attention. She kept walking, went on down the street, had some lunch and everything, came back and was walking back down the street. And the bird looks at her and she looks in the window and he says, ooh, there you go again. You are really unattractive. You are not attractive at all. So the woman was a little embarrassed. She didn't know exactly who he was talking to, but she kind of felt like he was speaking to her. So she went on back to work and sat at her desk and finished her day. So a couple days later, she decided to go back down the street again and get some lunch. And she's walking and um, she sees the pet shop and the bird's in the window again. He says, hey lady, you again. Ooh wee, you're ugly. Oh my God, you sure are ugly. This is just, ooh, you ugly. So she kept walking, she went and got her food and ate, and on the way back, the bird started again. So she came to the shop, she asked to speak to the manager, and she told the manager that the bird's been heckling her, and she didn't appreciate it. It wasn't nice, and he's saying mean things to her. And she, he apologized, and he said that's his wife's bird, he's kind of stuck with the bird, and um, he'll make sure it never happens again. So the woman leaves, he goes to the bird, he says, look, you're getting, me, you're getting me in trouble here. You know I can't get rid of you, I can't sell you, I can't cook you and eat you because my wife loves you. But you keep on and, and it's gonna be some real problems. You keep trying me, I'm telling you. If that woman comes back in here again, it's gonna be a problem. So, lady doesn't come by for a couple days. A couple days later, lady comes strolling down the street. The bird's in the window, he sees her, she looks over, he says, hey lady, now you know I can't say anything, but you know, you know. That's my joke, hope you liked it. Um, come back for the next one. Um, stay tuned, more delicious meals. I'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures and uh, God bless and thanks for subscribing. I have 18 now. Thank you guys, love you much. Bye-bye.